Hi, this is Matthew Cratter from Trader University. And today I want to talk about high short interest stocks, what they are and how to profit from them. If you're interested in stock trading strategies, learning how to short stocks, that sort of stuff, make sure you hit that subscribe button. I'm going to be doing more videos on that topic. So I wanted to just jump right in and uh, with some basic terminology. Uh, shorting, well, we should probably go back to this chart. Uh, so basically when you, when you short a stock, it's the opposite of buying low and selling high. Instead, what you do is you sell high and you buy low. So you borrow shares from your broker of a stock that you'd like to short. You borrow shares, you sell them on the open market, and then you try to buy them back at a lower price. This is a uh, chart of Tesla. This has obviously been a great short candidate uh, this year. But that's the, basic, that's the basic principle of how to short a stock. Now, when you short a stock, the number of shares that are short get counted and get reported. So let's just take a look at Shake Shack. Here's an example. I just went to Yahoo Finance. I clicked on statistics. And if you scroll down here, you'll see some interesting, uh, some interesting data. So let's just begin with very basic stuff. Shares outstanding. That's how many shares of stock there are. That's how many pieces of, of pie, for example, the entire company is cut into. Uh, but then not usually not all of those shares are available for free trading. They may be locked up by insiders or VCs or something like that. And so the more accurate um, way of looking at how many shares are available to trade is what's called the float. So in the case of Shake Shack, we have 29.7 million shares outstanding, but the float is only 25.36 million. So call it uh, 3 million shares roughly are uh, locked up and not tradable. Now we mentioned when you when you short shares of stock, it gets reported by your brokerage to uh, to the Nasdaq or to the NYSE to the exchanges, and then this this data is made public. Uh, for the Nasdaq, it's made public every two weeks, and so what they basically report is just how many shares of that stock have been shorted. So in this case, uh, as of July 30th, which was the most recent reporting period, 2019, 3.99 million shares have been sold short. So roughly 4 million, 4 million shares. Now, if you wanna see this over a period of time, what you can do is you can just go to, for any NASDAQ stock, just go to Google, type in the ticker. In this case, we'll do IRBT, iRobot, short interest. So type in, the, type in the ticker plus short interest, and you'll get this list of results. Uh, the, the result you want is on the nasdaq.com. If we just scroll down here, if we scroll down here, what we'll see is uh, some interesting data. So we'll have the settlement date or the, uh, the, the, the date as of which this data is good. So it's reported usually with about a two week delay. So it's mid-August now. The most recent data we have is July 31st, 2019. Short interest, just how many million shares have been sold short by short sellers, in this case, 8.8 .8 million on, uh, on iRobot. Uh, average daily share volume and days to cover. Now, at this point, let's turn to uh, turn to some definitional stuff, just in terms of learning what a short interest ratio is. So we've already talked about the short interest, just the number of shares sold short, shares outstanding, how many shares of stock, and then the float, how many available shares uh, are available to be traded. Now, the short interest ratio is sometimes known as days to cover, and what this is, it's just the short interest or the number of uh, of uh, shares sold short divided by the average daily volume. That's one way of defining it. So let's go back, look at our iRobot. Uh, this is the short interest ratio right here that they're reporting days to cover. And so what they're basically doing is they're taking the short interest, they're dividing it by the average daily share volume. And I'm not sure exactly how they calculate this, if this is a monthly average or a, uh, a rolling 30-day average or a rolling 365-day uh, average. Whatever it is, uh, you basically take this column and divide it by this column. That gives you the short interest ratio days to cover. Now this is not a ratio that I'm that interested in, and I'll show you I'll show you why. And I want to show you this because a lot of people a lot of people use this. Um, now uh, the the real problem with this is that especially in stocks where the daily volume or the average daily volume changes quite a bit over two weeks. So you can see here it's 1.7 million. Here it's about 500,000. Moves around quite a bit, and so you can see days to cover here is moving. Even though the, the short interest, the number of shares sold short are about 8 million this whole time, you can see days to cover is 5, it's 15, it's 16, it's 19, it's 4. This isn't really a good measurement. 
So what I like to use, I like to use a different version of the short interest ratio. And uh, to define that, we can go back. There, there are really two ways that people do it. So, or I'd say there are three ways. So we already talked about days to cover, which is just the short interest divided by uh, the average daily volume. I like, the, uh, I like to use a different version. Uh, the middle version, short interest ratio, is just the short interest number of shares sold short divided by shares outstanding. I find this is not as useful as using the float because what you're really interested in, you're interested in, in whether and how long it takes shorts to cover in an emergency. So let me, let me just go back and show you on the chart. So let's say Tesla sh starts to rally as it did at the end of May in this year. Now what happens if you're if you've sold shares short, you may begin to panic and want to buy them back because when you're short a stock, if the stock moves up, you lose money. Now if the stock moves up a lot, your broker may even give you a margin call and take your shares away from you and force you to uh, to buy back the shares. And so this is what's called a short squeeze when the shorts get squeezed. And so what we're looking at here with the short interest ratio is just different ways of anticipating whether there's, there's going to be a short squeeze. So here's the formula that I, that I really like to use. I like to use a definition of the short interest ratio, which is defined as the short interest divided by the float. So just the number of shares sold short divided, divided by the float, which is just, as we said, the number of shares that are available to be traded. So I tend to ignore this, uh, this days to cover. I find it's, it's less useful. You may find it useful. Some people say if it's above 10, uh, the stock is highly shorted. I don't find that very, uh, very useful. So let me let me show you how I like to I, li I like to use this. So what we do is we look for let's go back to Shake Shack. Again, we define shares outstanding was about 30 million. The float was about 25 million. Uh, lists uh, as we saw the uh, the number of shares sold short is 3.99 million. Call it 4 million. And you can see here they have the short ratio. This is they're just the, they're dividing the shares sold short divided by the average daily volume. So this this says roughly it's gonna it would take at average daily volume it would take shorts about six days to cover. Now this isn't a huge amount uh, as we said, uh, you know, ten or more uh, would be a significant short. But let me show you the the data point that I really like to use, and that is the short as a percentage of float. Now if this is above fifteen percent, I define the stock as being highly shorted. So again, this is just shares sold short divided by the float and you end up with a percentage so and anything over 15 percent i consider significant and what this means is that basically of all the shares that are available to be traded uh to be freely traded 15 16 percent are sold short and these are people who will eventually have to buy back the stock now what happens when they buy back the stock well we can look at shake shack here again s-h-a-k we're looking at a daily chart here. You can see that it reported earnings on uh, August 5th after the bill. And then the next day it gapped up very sharply. So this was a highly shorted name. The short interest was above 15% as we saw. We can see the date uh, of, this, of the short interest was July 30th. So it was definitely before earnings were reported. They were reported in early August. So what I like to do is I like to screen for stocks that have a, shy, a high short interest as a percentage of float. And if you stick around for a couple minutes, I'm going to show you how to screen for those. But I like to find stocks with a high short interest uh, ratio defined as shares sold short divided by float. And I like to look for stocks that have reported earnings and that are gapping up very strong on earnings. So you want to see a spike in volume. You want to see a big green daily bar as we saw here. And you basically want to see this forced buying. And what this means is the shorts have made a mistake and uh, maybe they underestimated Shake Shack's growth and uh, the earnings report now provides new information. The company's growing really fast. They're chicken nuggets or whatever, selling like hotcakes. And so their earnings are going way up. And so these shorts want to get out. Now, when 15% of the float is short, that's quite significant. And it will take them a couple days to get out. So if you can find a stock that's gapping up on good earnings and on high volume, what you can do is you can go long at the end of that day or even, even intraday. And then what you want to do is hold it for a few days. What you'll get is what's called post earnings announcement drift. And this happens when, when uh, institutions, big institutions have to adjust their position. In this case, because we've been screening for stocks 
with a high short interest, these are basically, for the most part, I would imagine, shorts that are covering, um, they're covering their short position. They're having to buy the stock and it's driving it higher. And we can sort of, as small traders, we can sort of surf along on this wave. Now, if you want to find stocks like this, you can go, there are two, really two ways to do it. You can first go to highshortinterest.com, highshortinterest, all one word, dot com. And this provides just a great list of, of stocks that have a high short interest. And um, they define it as, uh, it looks to me like they define it as uh, the way that I'm defining it. So they take the number of shares sold short divided by the float. They tell you the float here. And then they express it as a percentage. And you can search, you can screen for NASDAQ stocks. You can screen for NYSE, or you can just screen for all stocks. And you can see they, they basically list stocks that have a short float, a short interest float of, um, of above 20, 20%. You can see there's some amazing names here like GameStop that has a uh, GME, GameStop that has a uh, 58% uh, short float. Now, it's very important to wait until earnings and to see if there's a real reaction as we got in Shake Shack. And uh, the reason for this, the reason you want to wait is because for the most part, short sellers are very smart people and they're usually right. So let's just, let's just pick a couple names from this, this list from highshortinterest.com. Let's take a look at, well, we can start with GME, GameStop, which we talked about. You can see the stock has just gone straight down. Let's pick one more. Uh, we'll do uh, uh, HIIQ. That's the top one on the list, the most shorted stock. You can see this stock has gone down. So one thing you can do, if you own any stocks, you should make sure that they don't have a high short interest. You can go look on under statistics on Yahoo, as we talked about. If your stock has a, a short percentage of float above 15%, you better really understand the business. And if you don't understand the business and the fact that it's turning around, or you don't have some really deep fundamental understanding of the business, you probably shouldn't be holding the stock. A good example of this is Tesla, for example, which I've been quite bearish on for the last 12 months. So that's the first thing you can do. You can make sure that you don't own these names. These are stocks that uh, the companies are in decline. Maybe they uh, um, their revenues are declining or they make a product that's not de desired anymore. So you gotta be very careful to be long these stocks. That being said, if you do get a good earnings reaction as we did at Shake Shack, not a bad, uh, not a bad trade because sometimes the short sellers are wrong and when they're wrong, you can get, as we said, uh, a very high short squeeze. So two places to find a list of stocks like this, highshortinterest.com. The other one is you can go to finviz.com. You can click on screener, which is just right here. And then you can go to the drop down where it says float short. And what you can do is you can basically screen for stocks that are over 10%, uh, over, uh, call it over 15%. And then what you can do is you can, you can um, arrange them by price. You definitely don't want to trade any stocks that are under five or ten dollars a share, and so you can you can rank them by price and take a look at stocks with high high short interest. And these are good ones to watch. You can see Tesla earnings tree, uh, I'm sorry, lending tree are, are near the top here. These are stocks to watch for some sort of earnings reaction, some sort short sort of a short squeeze. But again, you got to be very careful. These are not stocks you want to own as a long term investment unless you really understand the business and you know what you're doing. Now, if you enjoyed this video and you've listened this far, you may be interested in my online courses. I have a course called Learn to Trade Stocks Like a Pro, uh, Price Action Trading Course, uh, Swing Trading with Options if you want to uh, learn how to really leverage these sort of big moves and momentum stocks and trade them using puts and calls. That's a great course. And uh, for all you YouTube listeners, I wanna offer you a special coupon, special discount code so if you just um, click in the link below, it'll take you to uh, this join page at Trader University. And these are all online courses you can watch at your own uh, at your own leisure. Monthly tuition is $125 for 30 days access. But with the coupon code I'm going to give you, the discount code, I'm going to take $26 off of that. You can get this for just $99 a month. You can cancel any time. There's no long-term contract or anything. Uh, but there are really a lot of uh, in-depth courses here. I'm a retired hedge fund manager. I really understand the markets. And so if you're really looking to learn from a market professional, uh, you may enjoy these. So you just click Get It Now. And when you come to the purchase page here, what you can do is you can click on, uh, let's see, it's not letting me buy it again. 
So let's go to a uh, incognito. It's because I'm already uh, already subscribed here. So what you want to do is you want to click down here where it says have coupon code. And then if you just type in YouTube 2019 and click update, you'll see that it takes the the the, end, the monthly price down to just $99, a uh, $99 for 30 days access. You can watch all the courses within 30 days and cancel if you want, or you can stay uh, stay subscribed. As part of this, you'll also get access to my uh, cryptocurrency portfolio, which trades I'm making. Uh, you can follow my trades. And so that's something to see as well. And I'll also be adding new courses all the time. So hopefully you found this video interesting. If you're interested in learning more stock trading strategies, click that subscribe button or check out my courses. Again, I put the link and the discount code in the notes below. Thanks a lot for listening and I'll see you in the next video.